from the Ministry of the Presidency in Georgetown, this is This Week with the President. Welcome to another edition of This Week with the President, a weekly news magazine which provides you with an in-depth look at the policies, programs and work of Guyana's President. I'm your host, Vinny Tameshwar. In the highlights this week, President orders Board of Inquiry into Troubles at Camp Street Prison, President confers National Award on Brazilian Foreign Minister, a new Portuguese ambassador accredited. Stay with us. Following three days of disturbances at the Camp Street Prison, President David Granger convened an emergency meeting of the National Security Committee and ordered that a commission be set up to investigate the issue and make recommendations to prevent occurrence of similar incidents. This is certainly the worst prison riot we've had in Guyana, but um, we never expected that um, any disturbance uh, in the prison would degenerate. So what we've seen um, over the last couple of days. So I would certainly like to extend our condolences to the family, and I will discuss with the Minister of Public Security some arrangements to uh, relieve the distress of the families, even though these are persons who might have been there for you know, criminal purposes. I think the state would like to assert that we are responsible for the lives of all our citizens and, um, and the children of those victims. So I will be discussing with the Minister of Public Security how we can extend some, uh, some relief to those families as well. The president said that the discovery of large amounts of contraband items in the prison is a matter that needs urgent attention, and this is one of the areas the commission will be addressing. He also said that the government will be recruiting new officers to address the staff shortage and will be improving the physical infrastructure of the prison. Even as Guyana continues to extend its reach globally, it is making efforts to deepen historic diplomatic ties. This was exemplified on March 2nd when President David Granger conferred on Brazil's Minister of External Affairs Guyana's second highest national award, the Order of Roraima. The conferral of this award is in recognition of Minister Mauro Luiz Lecavera's decades of outstanding service in the Foreign Service of Brazil and successful career in diplomacy, much of which saw him working for the betterment of the people of the hemisphere. It is a testimony to the partnership that has been established for several decades between um, Brazil itself and, and Guyana over the years. As the saying goes in international relations, you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your neighbors. But you can ensure that your neighbors are friends. And throughout our relationship, we have always been able to depend on the friendship of Brazil. The Brazilian minister and his accompanying delegation also held bilateral meetings with his Guyanese counterpart, Minister Carl Greenwich, to discuss areas of cooperation. Brazil and Guyana have very important relations since the independence and even before we were present here. We want to develop um, even uh, closer relations between the two countries and to work together with the Guyanese government so as to deepen our channels of cooperation in different areas. I'm very, very honored to have received this important award which carries the name of Roraima, which is so important. It's also the name of the Brazilian state on the border with Guyana. So I'm very honored to have this uh, uh, order which uh, also represents the closeness and the friendship between the two countries. The ancient county of Burbies, with a population of over 110,000 people, has the potential to become a commercial and economic hub, which could lead to Guyana's economic recovery. Speaking at a function hosted by the Rotary Club of New Amsterdam, the president described Region 6 as a sleeping giant, which, if awakened, can ensure Guyana's growth and development. The region is the country's cattle ranch, its sugar bowl, its rice pot, its fish market, and a marketplace for its commodities. 
The head of state also issued a call for the regional administration and communities to work together with central government to eliminate personal, political, racial, and cultural biases and divisiveness, which still exist in the region. This, he said, will not only make for more socially cohesive society, but will also foster economic development. The regional administration and central government have to develop a plan of action and this plan must bring together all stakeholders, civil society and governmental, and most of all, the communities. This plan has to be anchored in the concept of regional peace and understanding, which you celebrate tonight, of unity. It must re reject the politics of division, which try to keep this region divided into little enclaves. This region doesn't belong to any political party. It belongs to the residents who must be able to share in your bounty. We must dispense with the politics and the culture of strife, which hinders peace and understanding. The president spoke of the government's efforts to improve the security sector's capability to reduce the incidences of criminal activities not only in Region 6 but across the country. This message was well received by residents. As we celebrate world understanding and peace, it was indeed refreshing and reassuring to know that our government today has peace and security on the front burner. And as we celebrate world understanding and peace, and as businessmen, that is indeed reassuring. Meanwhile, the pursuit of economic recovery and green sustainable development highlights more than ever the need for an educated population. This is the underlying objective of the government of Guyana's Tree Bees program. The most recent beneficiaries of this program are the children of East Barbies, Region 6. President Granger visited the region to commission two 50-seater buses, one to serve the areas between Lancaster and Number 2 Village, lower quarantine, and the order to transport children from the East Bank of Barbies to and from school. You have so much potential. You are the sugar bowl of the country. You're the rice pot of the country. You're the fish market of the country. And we look to East Barbies quarantine to lead the economic recovery of our whole country. But you can only play that leadership role if you have an educated population. Without the skill, without the talent, without the intellectual capability, we cannot develop this region, develop this country. While the government will continue to invest in infrastructure, training for teachers, and garnering the support of the business community to sustain programs like the Tree Bees, Parents in particular and citizens in general have an important role to play as well. In this very region, there are 96 communities. And we want to make sure that in every single community, every neighborhood, every municipality, our children will get to school. And I want every parent here today, every would-be counselor, every villager, every adult to leave here with one promise on the lips, that I will do everything to make sure children get to school. If I can afford it, I know there's a child in my village, a child in my street, who is not going to school because he has no breakfast or because they have no transport. If you see children lying about, ask them why they're not at school and try to help them to get to school. You'll see the difference in East Babi's quarantine. One of the buses was donated by Mr. Mohammed Nasruddin and the other by the Ramada Princess Hotel. This brings to three the total number of buses handed over to the region under the program thus far. It's a grand and it's a kind gesture for them because not only will it allow only certain students who are who can afford it to go to school, but it allows an equal opportunity for each child and that is what it is. Each child must have an equal opportunity for education. So thank you for allowing that to happen very much. I think it would help out those who cannot afford it, especially like if your parents like they're not working and stuff like that. I think it will help out. 
those needs. You know, the, the, the drivers on the road, they hardly want to pick up the school children because of the little fee that the children can afford to pay or so, you know. And um, I'm so happy for it. I'm very happy for this initiative. And I wish that more people can come on board too, you know. We are not in the position, but we are hoping for the, the ones on top to help, to assist, you know. And it can be spread around the country, the, the entire country, you know. Even though some area may look like they don't need, they all need. We are all in need in this country. We need of certain things, amenities. All of us cannot afford the amenities of life, you know. Though Guyana is a small country with a relatively stable political and economic environment, external and other threats are ever present, and as such, the military must be in a state of preparedness to repel any attack. As Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Guyana, President Granger explained that preparedness does not mean aggression, since Guyana has more than once successfully defended its territory with sheer diplomacy. The President made these remarks in his address to the Guyana Defense Force on Thursday at the opening of its Officers' Conference at Base Camp in Ghana. Guyana mobilizes international solidarity to support its sovereignty. It reaffirms important principles of international law, such as respect for the inviolability of borders and international agreements, the peaceful settlement of disputes, non-aggression and non-interference in internal affairs of other states, and the right to peaceful coexistence. Guyana, for 50 years, successfully pursued diplomacy as an instrument of defense. Guyana is a small state, but we have used our diplomatic might to garner support for our efforts to deter aggression, to safeguard our territorial integrity, and to secure the cooperation of the international community. The head of state made it clear that Guyana's efforts cannot be isolated from those of other regional jurisdictions, noting that the Caribbean community is at the core of Guyana's security strategy. Guyana's national defense strategy, therefore, over the next four years, taking us to 2020, must acknowledge the need to take steps in concert with our regional partners to address security threats facing the Caribbean. Guyana must be a reliable partner in the cause of regional security and in ensuring that the Caribbean remains a zone of peace. As part of a new total defense strategy, the government is working to augment the strength of the Ghana Defense Force with a strong reserve force, namely the Ghana People's Militia. The president said that these two forces must always be in a state of operational readiness and be capable of being deployed to any part of the country. Organizational changes which have been directed will ensure that the defense force, within its financial limitations, can adequately discharge its duty to defend Guyana. Guyana's borders are too extensive, its landscape is too expansive, and the cost of maintaining large regular units too expensive if we are to preserve our territorial and coastal security. The coastal surveillance and security of our territory demands that the force have a physical presence in each administrative region in the form not only of regular units, but also part-time reserves. The reserve force will support and supplement the regular force. The conference, which allows the force to map out its work plan for the rest of the year, was held under the theme towards greater operational readiness for national defense and security. The GDF was quite a busy organization in 2015. Another year of achieving our mission by doing our best with the military equipment we have. For 2016, our operational tempo and training activities will be no less hectic than it was in 2015. For 2016, we remain hopeful that our shared aspirations for better air, maritime, and engineered assets necessary to exercise greater land and maritime domain awareness will be converted into a defense capability plan to detail and schedule procurement programs for the period 2016-2020. And now we'll take a look into the President's diary. 
On March 2nd, Acting Chief Justice Janet Cummings Edwards took her oath to the Judicial Service Commission before President Granger. The president noted that her appointment to the position is one of the many steps his government is taking to ensure that the integrity and professionalism of the judiciary of Guyana is preserved, while winning the confidence of the Guyanese public. As you know, we have taken measures to ensure that the autonomy and integrity of the judiciary in Guyana is not just a matter of uh, description, also matter in fact. And uh, together with the uh, Minister of Legal Affairs, Minister of State, and the other members of the National Assembly, this year, in 2016, we have taken a step forward and I want to show you, Honorable Chancellor, um, that we will continue to work towards preserving the dignity and the integrity of the Judicial Service Commission. The head of state expressed full confidence in the acting Chief Justice's ability, stating that it is his belief that she will discharge her functions without fear or favor, affection or ill will. On March 4th, His Excellency Manuel de Jesus Teles Fazendero was inducted as the new ambassador of Portugal to Guyana by President Granger. The main goal of my mission as Portuguese ambassador is to reaffirm to you the continuity of the friendship and the esteem of Portugal regarding Guyana and the strengthening of the relations between the Portuguese government and the government of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. In the framework of, of the present international relations, with a very demanding global scenario, these bilateral goals are significant. During the week, the president also met with political advisor of the Commonwealth Secretariat, Dr. Tresan Kramer, and members of the Ghana Islamic Trust. He also attended the funeral service of the late Assistant Commissioner of Police, Balram Passad at Ivleri. That brings us to the end of this week's program. Thank you for joining me. For regular updates on the Ministry of the Presidency, go to our website, www.motv.gov.gy. Like our Facebook page, Ministry of the Presidency, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at MOTP Guyana. Do have a safe and productive rest of the week. Goodbye.